Hello, I'm David Pogue. So, Apple has sold a million iPhones in two months. Not too shabby. But one thing hasn't changed. Even though this is a full-blown internet-connected computer, Apple still doesn't want people installing third-party programs, programs written by other than Apple, onto the iPhone. Now, Apple has said it's okay for you to access iPhone-specific programs that are on web pages, like there's a pretty cool gas tracker, and there are some good games, but that's not what we're talking about. That's not what people want. People want full-blown programs that live on the phone that you can access whether you're online or not. Now, Apple has some good reasons for not wanting people to do that. Uh, I believe the quote from Steve Jobs when talking to Newsweek was, you need it to work when you need it to work. Singular doesn't want to see their West Coast network go down because some application messed up. Well, honestly, I really don't think some tip calculator is going to bring down the AT&T network. <laughs> so anyway, I thought I would take you on a tour today of some of the third-party programs that have been written for the iPhone and run quite successfully, I might add. Now, your iPhone screen probably isn't full of icons. This one's not only full of icons, it actually scrolls, thanks to a free program called Sunburst. And how did I get so many programs? Easy, I used this program, installer.app, available for Mac or Windows. It's a catalog of hundreds of free programs for the iPhone. When you find one that you like in one of the categories, you just tap install and marvel as that software is downloaded unpackaged and installed on your iPhone automatically. Now you probably thought that you can't do instant messaging on the iPhone. Ah, uh, but you can if you install Apollo. It lets you do chatting with your friends on all the big networks .Mac, AIM, Yahoo, and MSN. And if your chat buddy uses a word you don't know, no biggie. Just open up one of the dictionary programs and look it up. Now everybody knows that the iPhone's accelerometer tells the phone which direction is up. The hackers of the world have put that feature to some clever use. Take a look, for example, at Sketches. At first glance, it's just a regular Etch-a-Sketch program, except that you can use your fingertip to draw. But if you remember your Etch-a-Sketch science, how do you erase your drawing? Why, of course. You shake it. Thanks, accelerometer. Now I know what you're saying. Aren't there any productivity apps for the iPhone? Sure, like this one. It lets you take a picture, dress the person up like a pirate, and then email it. Sent from my iPhone. Arrgh! What's that you say? Your iPhone has no voice recorder? Oh yes it does! Uh, note to self, send Steve Jobs thank you letter for a $100 refund. My favorite of all, though, is this one. When you get a little hungry, you just punch this icon right here. The thing runs a little hot, so you start shaking it, and you've got fresh popcorn for the kids. In fact, it's real popcorn. Reach in here. Mmm, delicious. And if you're still hungry, you can... Mmm, that is so good. Now these things do look pretty cool, I'll be the first to admit, but I also have to give you the obligatory warnings. None of these are authorized by Apple. Apple can break these at any time by introducing a new version of iTunes or something. Some of these could mess up your iPhone. If they do, it's not a big deal. You just use the restore function from your computer to put back on the iPhone everything that came with it, restore it to its original clean condition. But the lesson I wanted to give you here today is that there's nothing to be lost by a little experimentation. You'll have a little fun, you'll find out some useful new tools, and for goodness sakes, we'll get over that silly notion that some third-party application is going to bring down any kind of network. I mean, that's just... <laughs>